Hi, I'm Father Joseph Mary, and welcome back to A Simple Word, where we reflect on the gospel for the coming Sunday. This Sunday, the church presents us with 22 verses from Matthew's gospel. It's an extremely long and dense passage, which we could do a dozen videos on. So I'm only going to focus on the small abbreviated passage offered as an option in the lectionary. Sometimes when I'm traveling across the country in my car, I have to go through some pretty small towns. And it's not unusual for me to find myself sitting at a stoplight on some country road at midnight without another car in sight for miles. The law says I should wait for the light to turn green before proceeding. I never do that. I run the red light every time. Now, some would say I'm breaking the law. But the question posed in Sunday's gospel is whether man was made for the sake of the law or the law was created at the service of man. Do works of the law justify us? Jesus begins by warning his disciples. Unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. We see many instances in the Gospels in which Jesus seems pretty hard on these two groups. Why is that? We have to remember that the idea of the law was sacred to the Jews. What did they mean when they used that term, the law? The establishment of the Jews as the chosen people of God was cemented by their covenant on Mount Sinai. Moses received the law directly from God, the Ten Commandments. But it was the experience of the Jews throughout their history that they couldn't keep the law. Over and over, they forsook God's commandments. And when they forsook the law, bad things happened. They lost their land, they lost the temple, and they were enslaved by foreign powers. And so it became paramount to keep from transgressing the Ten Commandments. In order to do this, the scribes created a broad fence of laws, in Hebrew a berith, that surrounded the Ten Commandments. And at first, these scribal laws were passed on orally from generation to generation. Finally, in the middle of the third century AD, they were codified in the Mishnah, an 800-page book that details in 73 treatises all the 613 laws the faithful Jew must observe. So the scribes were the group that sat down and wrote this intricate system of laws. And the Pharisees, literally the separated ones, they were the men who committed their lives to embodying every tenant of these laws. And they considered this a matter of life and death. But as we see over and over, Jesus didn't seem to give a hoot about all these laws. He picked grain and healed on the Sabbath. He was constantly breaking these laws. He was crucified as a lawbreaker. The problem with the scribes and Pharisees was that they saw the keeping of all these little rules as the means to justification. But what makes us righteous? What justifies us in the eyes of God? It's not the keeping of the law. The death of Jesus Christ on the cross is what brings about sanctifying or justifying grace. But the scribes and Pharisees keep all the rules, so they don't see any need for Jesus. Their righteousness is based in themselves. But then the gospel continues and Jesus goes further, much further. In order to grasp the effect of what he says next, we have to understand the reverence and holiness in which the Jews venerated the law. To them, the law, especially the Mosaic law, was something divine. It was given by God. And so what does Jesus do? He quotes this law three times, only to replace it with his own teaching. You've heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, Whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Again and again, Jesus says, You have heard that it was said, but I say to you. You have heard that it was said, but I say to you. The people were shocked. Because he was preaching with an authority unlike anything they had ever heard before. Anything they had ever even imagined. The point of all this, this entire passage is righteousness or justification. 
What justifies us in the eyes of God? For the scribes and the Pharisees, it was works of the law. Yet St. Paul says in Galatians that we're, we were held prisoners to the law. The law condemns us. Our failure to keep the law convinces us that we're sinners. For Christians, it's not works of the law that justify, but works of faith. Namely, to believe in Jesus Christ and to accept the gift of redemption. In my work with young people, especially with people who are discerning a religious vocation, I often hear the same objection over and over again. I'm just not worthy. And my answer to them was always the same. You're right. You're not worthy. And I'm not worthy. And none of our Capuchin brothers are worthy. And Pope Francis isn't worthy. None of us are worthy because of our accomplishments, because of our moral purity. That doesn't justify us. The idea that we can earn our salvation, it's a heresy. So you're right. You're not worthy. Not because of anything you've done. But Christ has made you worthy out of sheer grace. God loved you enough to send His Son to die for you. And maybe as you're listening to this reflection today, you're struggling with those same feelings of unworthiness, guilt, shame. Maybe you just can't let go of mistakes you've made or sins you've committed. Maybe you're a prisoner to your own fears and anxieties. I encourage you to stop. Find a crucifix, get down on your knees, and behold your salvation. His love for you, His sacrifice, that's what makes you worthy. By His wounds we were healed. I'm Father Joseph Mary, and thanks for listening to A Simple Word. If you found this reflection helpful, please be sure to give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to see future videos.